Welcome to lecture 42, pass by reference versus pass by value. So let me start off by saying when I say pass, what that means is that's sending information into a function through its parameters. So it's basically an argument. Passing is just giving that information. In the last example, when we had the add function, we passed in 5 and 10. Those are two numbers. So pass just means that you're actually giving it the information it wants through its parameters or through its parentheses. So in this, I just want to go over the difference of passing by value and passing by reference. I'm not going to go into it too much of how it works in the memory kind of side. We'll get into that in later videos. But rather in this, we're, I just want to talk about and just introduce you to the topic so you have a, a little bit better understanding of how it works. So if you remember from previous lectures, we built a program that basically manages students' grades and can give them um, extra credit points and things like that. And I, I just want to simulate that kind of here in this video by just making one integer saying int student one grade. So this is student one grade, and I'll just give them a grade of let's say 75. So we're just simulating, okay, the student entered in this grade, and we have this grade stored into this variable. But now I want to give them extra credit. So I know that my program is probably going to be giving extra credit to a lot of students over and over again. So instead of making the code inside of main, I'm going to make a function called give extra credit that will be responsible for just giving the extra credit. And then I can use that any single time I want to actually give a student extra credit. So I'm going to build that function by saying public, that's its access modifier, which means anyone can use it, then static for now. Then the actual return type, but I'm not going to return anything. I'm just going to return void, saying it's not returning anything, because I'm just going to update the student's grade from this function. Then I'm going to name the function. I'm going to say give extra credit. And then in order to use this function, you need to, you need to give me a student's grade. So I'm going to say int student's grade. So you have to give me or pass to me a integer. And that will be the student's grade that I'm actually giving extra credit to. So now inside the function, how am I going to give the person extra credit? I'm going to say student's grade plus equals three. So I'm giving, I'm giving them third, um, three extra points. So now I want to actually do it and see them get the extra credit. So inside of main, I'm going to say give extra credit. And it needs an integer student's grade oh and I have one student one grade so I'm going to pass in student one grade and then I'm going to call that so I'm passing in the student's one grade into this function it should come in add three return and then we should see in a result so before I call the add function I'm going to print out the student's grade so I'm going to say console.write line students students grade before extra credit and I'm going to pass in student one grade. And then after I get the extra credit, I'm going to print out their grade again. So this is the student's grade after the extra credit. And this is before the extra credit. So give extra credit. Let's see what happens when I run this. So it says student's grade before the extra credit was a 75. But the student's grade after the extra credit is also a 75. Wait, that's not right. Something is wrong. This code seems to not be running. It's not doing student's grade plus equals 3. But the surprising thing is, is that it actually is running. I'm going to add another console.write line statement. And I'm going to print out the student's grade inside of the function. I'm going to say students, students grade after extra credit inside function and then it's inside of here it's called students grade oops so now i'm printing in their grade inside of this function let's see what happens so as you can see it prints students grade before extra credit then give extra credit is called so it go it jumps into here it runs the plus equals three and it prints out another statement and says students grade after extra, extra credit is 78. So inside of give extra credit, their grade did go up to 78. They, they did get the extra credit. 
But then when it jumps back, it goes back to here and then continues on. It then says student's grade after extra credit is a 75 again. So it went to 75, 78, but then back to 75. What is going on? So basically, this is the idea of pass by reference and pass by value. What we're seeing happen here is pass by value. And the reason why it actually is passing by value, we're not going to go over really that much right now. We will go over this more in the future. But the reason why it's happening is because the built-in data types, integer, double, bool, character, these basic data types that we use are called value types. So an integer is a value type. And the reason why it is a value type is because it's a struct. We actually saw that in the last video. When I did int.parse and I passed in some text or whatever, I went to here and I did peak definition. And we saw that int or int32, which represents int, is a struct. It says it's a structure. We haven't gone over structures yet, but a struct is basically a value type in C sharp. So anything that is a struct is a value type. Anything that is a class is a reference type. And we're going to get into this a lot more in the future, so do not worry. But what I want to explain now is structures or value types get passed by value. So now I'm going to go into what does that actually mean to get passed by value. So in this situation, I passed in this integer student one grade into this function and I modified it. But what's actually really happening is when you pass by value, you're just sending in the value. So when I pass in students one grade and this function call right here, I'm not passing in the variable students one grade. Rather, I'm just passing in the number 75. So 75 gets passed into this function right here. 75 is then stored into this new variable called student's grade. Student's grade is a new parameter variable inside that only lives inside of this function. It's a brand new variable. These two variables are completely different. So all I'm saying is now student's grade has the value of 75 also. It basically just made a copy of it and now this is a 75 as well. When I increase the grade by three points, it only increases the grade of this variable right here, this copy of the variable. This student's one grade up here is not affected at all. It did not get affected because it just passed the value 75 into here and that was changed. But when it comes back into main and it runs this line of code, students one grade is still 75. It was never changed because it never, the variable got, never got changed. It just passed a copy or it just passed the value 75. And then that value of 75 was changed on this variable right here in students grade. But that variable is the only thing that gets changed. It never is affected in here. So, we could fix that immediately by changing this to an integer return type and then returning the val the new grade with that was added with the extra credit and then we can just reassign it into here but in the next yeah in the next lecture we're going to take a look at how we can fix it a different way so that this is an intro to pass by value structs or basic data types like int double bool get passed by value meaning it passes just the value of the, the whatever it is into the function. And then that can be changed, but it does not affect the original variable at all. Now, this is, that's what differs from pass by reference. Pass by reference is completely different. So I'm going to add some comments real quick. This is our pass by value. And then we're going to mess with pass by reference in here. So, in order to demonstrate pass by reference, I need to use a reference type. And the only really reference types that we've been dealing with are arrays. Now, when, I, when we create an array, like int array, stu, I'll say grades equals new int array. And I'll say there is one student in this array. So, we have one student in our array. And then I go grades sub zero equals, I'll give them a 75. 
So this is a class. Integer array is a class. Surprisingly enough, int alone is a structure, so it's a value type. An integer array is actually a class, so it's a reference type. So classes are reference types. And the big hint that tells you that this is a reference type is this new keyword. That new keyword is what makes it a reference type. New basically does stuff with memory behind the scenes, which we will get to eventually. But for now, just know that when you see new, it's most, it is a class and it's a reference type. And re when you have a reference type and you pass into a function, different things happen. So let's try doing this example again, but our function this time is going to have an array as a parameter and we're going to see the difference what happens so let's build a new function called public static void give extra credit array and it's going to take in an integer array called grades so basically what this function is saying now is in order to use this function you need to give me an entire array so, and we have an array, so it's going to be perfect. Our array only has one student in it, but it's still an array nonetheless. And because I know it's only one student, instead of going through the entire thing with the loop, giving everyone extra credit, I'm just going to give the first student extra credit because I know it's only one element, but it's not really practical. In the real world, you would do a for loop, go over the array, give every single one extra credit. But anyway, I know it's only one student in this array, so I'm going to go grade sub zero equals or plus equals three. So I'm giving that extra credit to the first student in the grades array, and then that's it, and then the function leaves. So inside of here now, I need to call the extra credit version. I want to say give extra credit array. I'm going to pass in the grades array because it says it requires an array. So it says you need to give me an array, so I gave it an array. Grades is an integer array. So I'm going to also add in some dialog. I'm going to say comes with the right line. Um, student array grade before extra credit. And I'm going to say this is grade sub zero it is my student that I'm talking about. It's the first student in the array. And then we're going to do the after one. Uh, after extra credit once again the same thing however watch what happens here is going to be different so students grade before so the first part is the pass by value you see 75 78 but then it goes back to that 75 now with the arrays however so the the, the grade before the extra credit it was a 75 but then the student array grade after the extra credit, it is a 78. So the student did get his extra credit. So it worked by just doing this grade sub zero plus equals three. The reason why it worked is because we're doing pass by reference. So pass by reference, pass by value. Pass by reference happens with classes, pass by value happens with structs. But why does it happen? What What is actually happening behind the scenes? And I'm going to briefly explain it to you now. Like I said, we will do it more in detail in later lectures. So because class, a class, is a reference type, whenever you pass a class into a function, so we're passing this grades, basically class, inside of this function, it gets passed by reference. And what that means is that it's passing the location, the memory location of the actual variable itself. So when it, when it gets passed in, it's not passing in just this grade array or something like that. It's passing in the location of the grade array. So essentially, it is passing in the array itself. Whereas pass by value passes a copy or just a value pass by reference actually passes the entire array itself its whole entirety of it you can think of so when you actually manipulate it inside of this array or inside of this function you're actually manipulating the same exact piece of the same exact array so when you make changes to it in here you you are actually changing this array up here they are the same exact thing you're you actually are passing a reference to it into the function so when it comes into here 
you're actually looking at the same exact array that is out here. Any changes you make to it inside the function directly reflects on the grade array itself, the original array. So pass by reference passes in the exact variable to it. And the reason why this happens is all about this new keyword, which we'll look into a lot more detail, like I said, but it all happens because this new keyword. As you can see in pass by value, the value of the variable itself is a actual value. That's why it's a value type. Whereas pass by reference, the class, the value of the variable uh, of the class itself is not a value, rather it's a memory location. New is the job of new is to create a memory location in RAM and the value of grades is actually a memory location. And then when you actually pass in that value, you're passing in the memory location into the array itself. So anytime you make any changes, you're making changes to the same memory location. That's why we see the changes in both cases. So there's a lot of technical details with this. All I want you to really remember is pass by reference. Anytime you pass by reference, you're actually any changes you make to it inside of the function itself will be reflected in the original variable. Pass by value passes a uh, just the value or a copy in. So any changes you make to it inside the function, it does not affect the original variable. In the next lecture, two next lectures, we're going to look at a way that we can take a value type like a structure or an integer and force it to be passed by reference so that we can fix the extra credit problem with value types also.